Because why don't you want to say it? What? What's the reason why you don't want to say it? Not just because it's not true. If it's not true, we'll, we'll correct it. Because I'm cut scared of these people. That's pretty gnarly, man. Yeah. Welcome to Beckman's Unleashed. This is our second podcast. And I know this is a strange way to introduce the podcast, but there are going to be at least one edit in this. And it's because I said some truthful things about some powerful animal rights groups that the cost benefit analysis we decided in talking about this should not be left in. So I just want to come on here and say that there is an edit. We don't want to edit anything. Okay. I'm going to tell my opinion and blah, blah, blah. We don't want to edit anything, but there is going to be an edit in here because we talked about the history of these groups and it's a dangerous subject and it's not mm. wise for me to tell the truth about every single little thing <laughs> that getting comes into it. onto my mind because uh, it's just not wise. So there's going to be an edit in here. And, yeah, uh, that's what it's for. And I just wanted to tell you that. The big Terrible video. Teens. Terrible teens. Terrible teen video, which was dropped on Sunday is a, a video that we were like, yeah, I'll make a video. I found it from like a month ago. I was like, okay, we'll make it. Bro, it's the biggest video start we've ever had. It was insane. Like bigger than alpha, bigger than bully video of Prince. Do It's like the biggest video. Now, will it be the biggest video? Probably not, but it's the biggest start to a video we've ever had. I dropped it on Sunday. It's pretty crazy. Maybe... Maybe if people saw that video, they could go put in the comments why it's so good because we're stumped. That's a good idea, actually. I we gotta get out of airplane mode. That's a good idea because I I I just made it quick and it's it's the best the biggest video I've had. Eighty, the actual numbers are within twenty four hours. It's got eighty nine thousand views. It's pretty fast. That's fast. Now, what about the lady? So that was an interesting like component of the video, right? She's like a sweet lady and her dog, she's trying to get out of the car and her dog is like bashing her, right? Yeah. And I actually cut out the shaking of the car because I was like, what are people just going to watch a car that's kind of shaking? I was like, okay. So I started it when the, when the door was opening, mm -hmm. if you remember, but the car was like fully shaking. Yeah. And so that's when I started. But, um, the lady, listen, and I was going to say this in the video, like people, some people are bashing that lady, which happens. I, I'm not going to, I've made videos where I'm like, don't bash these people. She didn't go get a Cane Corso. Yeah. That dog under its hair is like 50 pounds. People are like, oh, she can't control that dog. It's like a 50 pound dog. The lady's not 90 years old. I, I you know. Some she can the, get that dog. Some people in the comments said, though, it was like similar to a uh, Belgian Malinois, but with hair. Is that true? No, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not a Belgian Malinois. Someone did say that. They're like, this is a Belgian Malinois. Exactly. No, it's not. Two people said it. No, it's a similar breed from a similar region. It is not a Belgian Malinois. Don't act like I they shouldn't act like it is. OK, yeah. No, she did not go get a Belgian Malinois, a tav tr tavern. Yeah, that's what, what they called. said. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I've trained them. They're, they're fine. They're not crazy. She should be able to get that dog. The, the, that's why she came to me because she needed to understand that her strength and she needs to be stronger than she actually is and use leverage. And that was, maybe that's why everyone liked it. Cause Prince like ran into the dog mm -hmm. and Prince knows what's better for a dog better than 95% of dog trainers in the world. And so when he ran into the dog, right, the slow motion portion of that video, yeah. people like that. And then I didn't even notice that the first time I saw it, I had to rewatch it to notice it. That's why I put in the clip of me showing her to grab him, take three steps into him. My methods are Prince's methods and Prince's methods are my methods. Yeah. I've never seen him run that into that sense? dog like that. I know. He like, like use his chest to like push his face. He just said, I will move you. And so guess what mom needs to do? Do the same Say, thing. Say, I will, I can move you. Guess what people out there need to do with their strong dog who 
thinks they're stronger than you because why would they not think they're stronger than you when you've never shown them you're stronger than them? Yeah, they don't know. They don't. And this isn't some power like every dog we need to. There are dogs who need to know that you're stronger than them. Also, it ain't rocket science. People, you mentioned in the video too that her husband died. So it's not like she even adopted this dog. She basically. Great point. It's kind of rough. I was um, going to put that in. She bought it a year after her husband died. She did not buy it a day after her husband died. And it was not some. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't say it. I just said her husband died. It was one year after her husband died. She gave time mm -hmm. for mourning, the whole thing. And she should be able to do that. So do you think people liked it because of the progress that happened? Or I feel like they identified with the, the, there's two parts I think they identify with the teen nature of it, that there's like the teens act and are harder to train, but then also the like, out of control nature in like the fact that maybe she was a little more frail and like, what do you do with a strong dog that's frail? Right. Like, and so maybe they identify with those two things. Yeah. I don't know. It could have been the fact that we put, this is a behind the scenes look. So that's part of this podcast is to show you and talk about the videos on the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. um, we put one to two years in the title. Do you know how many people have one to two year old dogs and no. they're struggling a lot, a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's not a puppy. Yeah. It's not a four year old. It's a one to two year old dog and it's a hard time. It's a teenage time. All the parents out there, like teens, teen kids are different. You know, I know they're different than they were when you're younger and they're different when they're adults. Is it's a hard a, time. Is a two year old dog like almost 100% of its full size that it will be? A two year old dog is its full size. They'll build, they'll get like more weight on them. But yeah, a one year old dog is its full size. Really? Yeah, there's like kind of a, I, I forget, so I hesitate to say it, but like, I think it's at four months, a dog is half the weight it's going to be as an adult, hmm. which I find interesting. They have that thing about um, kids are supposed to be like, at three years old are supposed to be half their height or something. You well, there you, eh, I've never heard that. Yeah. I don't know if it's true or not. Yeah. The dog thing. We'll try to keep this on dogs. Um, <laughs> it's not a par parent podcast. Uh, that was last week. Check it out last week. Yeah. If you're interested in that. So yeah, half the size. So yeah, by, by a year old, I think they're the size. Yeah. Hmm. They'll fill out. I think our question, it's not a question really, but I think we are genuinely interested in why that video oh, yeah. did so well, because we want to create the content that people really care about and that they want to see. And so I do think people were talking about in the comments that they wanted to see more uh, teenage dog stuff and how to handle it. But uh, we are genuinely curious about what people are so interested about in these videos. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I think the the video is as big as a video has ever been in 24 hours. Yeah. And so why? I don't know. I just randomly made that video with thinking it was we were not thinking it was going to be big. And it was big. And it is big. Does it have the legs? I don't know. Hmm. Is it, you know, the horrible video or the bully video or the hound video? I don't know big so, so they liked it um a couple of people wanted to know like if they could see the follow-up did you see that no. they wanted to know like how the the woman does in a period of time that'd be interesting to get more you know go back yeah. and check out dogs yeah see how people doing. always want follow-ups but guess what people don't want follow-ups <laughs> we put a follow-up on there it gets no views i'm not saying we don't do it i'm just saying like they're like we want a follow-up but you if know. you solve the problem, they're not coming back either. I don't want people to come back. Yeah. Dude, come out. Let's get the dog 80% better and move on with your life and go raise your children and go have fun and go hike the Grand Canyon. I, what you want to be at a, I, I, there's reasons to go to a dog trainer a number of times. There's a reason to do a board and train. I don't mean to get on, on, my, on my high horse, mm -hmm. but like I want, we will get a dog 80% better often in one session and that's the goal yeah that's the goal no that makes sense yeah so let's oh here's the other thing that i said in that video i said you shouldn't send your dog to doggy daycare for over four hours and boy did i have a lot of questions about that it was a firestorm in a good way no yeah people were i did not think people were going to have so many questions about that so i'm going to answer that now so Go ahead. All right. It's probably 20 people asked it probably or more. Yeah. So I have to preface this by saying 
a few things. One, I was the, I got to tell you my history with doggy daycare, because the way I am, when I hear somebody tell me something, I'm literally like, if I don't think they know what they're talking about, I will dismiss them or I will not do what they say. Cause I'm like, I don't know if you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. I started this business, my wife and I 16 years ago, we were in our first year of business. We drove by a place that said doggy daycare is coming soon. And we walked in and it was still a garage. And these three guys were opening up a doggy daycare. And my relationship with them started from that day. I taught classes at their facility. Then they opened another one. They start franchising. I taught classes at almost every facility. Then they became really big and start franchising all over the country. And they would send their new owners of the franchises from all over the country to me at my facility. And I would train them on the dog stuff. Mm. And I would get, and they all had my cards, all the, and so I'd get calls. I was basically working. I worked at this doggy daycare, not at it, but I was there a lot and I was in the yard and people would call me. And so I really got a good feel for doggy daycares. That's and we my won't history. use their name. We can. Doesn't yeah. matter. Um, they're great. They're great. But here's the thing too. When I said doggy daycares, here's my criteria. Okay. For what, when you shouldn't send them. Over. If the doggy daycare takes your dog in a good way, by the way, and gives them hours to rest in the middle of the day, my four hour rule does not apply. If, but they, I don't think they do that where your dog can actually sleep, where there's no barking, where they can calm their brain down for hours and then be let out back into the yard. My, my four hour rule doesn't apply. I'm talking about doggy daycares when dogs are playing most of the day, when there's over 30 dogs there and some doggy daycares are 20 dogs. My rule doesn't apply, but I believe most doggy daycares are over 30 dogs. And they just let them play all day. It's an overstimulation thing you're worried about. That's the problem. And it is a giant problem. And it will cause huge problems to 80% of the dogs later on. So that's my point. So four hour, four hour rule. Dogs go to doggy daycares and they basically, it is not natural to go that hard to be stimulated and to be stimulated that long. And what you do is you set your dog up to need to be constantly stimulated. So then you take days off of doggy daycare and in the middle of the day, your dog is used to just, just Madness. being like this. And then they start to, you've conditioned them because most people start when they're young too. They'll send four month old dogs to doggy daycare mm -hmm. every day for eight hours. You just ruined your dog. How is it? How difficult is it? Like, after they come back from doggy daycare, like at home? Well, that's a great question. It's not difficult because the dog's exhausted. Mm. And you go, my dog's easier and my dog's better. But you don't know what's what, what usually. Yes, your dog sleeps more. Yes, it makes it easier. Yes, you don't have to walk them as much. Those are good things, okay, to make your life easier. The bad thing is you are you are conditioning your dog's brain to be stimulated. Also, leash reactivity is a giant problem with doggy daycare dogs. When you go on a walk, they've just been with dogs for eight hours the day before. You think they want, a lot of them want to meet that dog the next day. Mm -hmm. They start barking at dogs to tell the dog because that dogs know leash reactivity is in part due to your dog barking and lunging so that mommy or daddy will take them away from the other dog. It's not aggression. It's literally saying, I don't want to meet that dog. Let's get out of here. So doggy uh, leash reactivity is a byproduct of too many hours at doggy daycare. Not for every dog. Some dogs can go and be good. I'm speaking in generality. So the four hour rule, twice a week, maybe three times a week, no more than four hours. That's my rule because I've worked at so many darn doggy daycares and been in the yards and I've seen it. I've just seen it. I'm going to put you on the spot. Great. Okay. So uh, I want to start a new business. It's a doggy daycare business. Yep. Can you help me to understand what the perfect doggy daycare setup would be and how many dogs there should be and how it should be space? Okay, is you it ready? Inside? Is you it ready? outside? Yeah. Okay, you shouldn't start the business. Okay, good. Because you know I why? wasn't going to. <laughs> okay. You know why you shouldn't start it? Hmm. Because you're, you can't do it. Because you need too much. My perfect doggy daycare requires too much staff. It requires too. It, it, you can't do it. I know how these doggy daycare runs. There's a lot of turnover because it's stressful on the employees and 
in order to get the amount of dogs you need to make any money, you you can't, you have to have too big of a space. Rent's too big. Like if you want to really get into this, we can get into this. Yeah, this is exciting to me. <laughs> you can't do it. The, the, the model is very difficult to actually make money and yet it be good. It be great for dogs. So the model's flawed. How much do you think someone pays? In my opinion, you know, around here to go to a doggy daycare to put their kid. I, or their kid I haven't been dog. the trainer for that doggy daycare in a long time. And I haven't Roughly. called around a day, eight yeah. hours. Yeah. They usually do it like up to four and then four to whatever. Um, after I'm, there's inflation right now, right? Yeah. So we're talking, I would say, oh, uh, if I was running it or yeah. what it is. I don't know. We got one around the corner. I'm curious. Uh, I would say you're you're getting uh, $50, uh, $50. 50. That's what I was going to say. $52 $50. for an eight hour day. 50 36 bucks. for a day. If I was running it, it'd be 80 bucks a day because I, because we need the staff. We need to make it good. We need to you know, have an area where the dogs can be rotated out, which takes staff. Leaving 50 dogs in a yard takes staff. Don't take that as much staff as, as, as to move them around all day. Well, here's the weird thing. So there's two doggy daycares in walking distance from here. Mm. And I will not say who they are, but one of them I know does not have much of a yard. And so this is a doggy daycare in a house, essentially. Oh, okay. I am, I'm, I like, I mean, it's weird to say a doggy daycare in a house, but um, if they take like four dogs, six dogs, then it's not the worst thing in the world. It's when dogs? you get into, in a house, yeah. 10, it's a, lot. It's a little much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you get into, I've been in yards with a hundred dogs. You guys, it is the weirdest thing because they're not used to new people coming out. A hundred dogs? Yeah. Dude. In a backyard? No, a doggy daycare, not a okay. yard. Okay. So I walk out into the yard, literally, because they're used to the dogs and they're used to the staff. I walk out, not a hundred dogs, but a fifth of those dogs literally go shoop and they surround you. And I just keep walking. That's how I operate, right? But they're they're literally surrounding you. And one's jumping here, and one's jumping here, and one's jumping on your back. And it's a very weird feeling. And I'm obviously used to the feeling more than most. And it's still very strange. It's and it's a little too weird that they're they they're tripped out by newness. Like they shouldn't be that tripped out by somebody coming in the yard. It shows you how how kind of stale is not the right word because they're stimulated, but it shows you how unchanging the environment is. Yeah. It's and a, that's not great. The Lord of the flies for the dog version kind of. And there, yes, it's a good point too. So, what, so there's a certain number of dogs. If you had a large enough facility in theory, not talking money wise, if you had a big enough place yeah. with few enough dogs, it should work out. Okay. Yes. Yes. But it doesn't work because of the model because you're not going to make enough money. How do you take 20 dogs and pay rent at your, at your, uh, uh, you know, where they do these is like these big garage doors that open and yeah. like, you know, big yard with turf, turf ain't cheap. Trust me. I know. Yeah. I was thinking we could add the doggy daycare people to the people that don't like us now no. from last week. Yeah. We're kind of adding them. Although I have a ton of doggy daycare subscribers, tons. That was probably the people who asked why it's not that good. It's, so maybe you can workers, make a video. I mean, workers. You can make Tons a video, of although you might, you might just cut this one up. But I mean, ultimately it's educational, right? So if people can take what you're saying and figure out how to make it work or maybe make a little bit less money and have a positive environment for the dogs, that'd be better. This podcast is not for my former partners who I still individually like them very much and don't want them to dislike me. Oh, and it's not for the doggy daycare workers as much as I like them. And by the way, doggy daycare workers are so smart about all of them could become dog trainers and be good dog trainers immediately because the sheer dog numbers doggy daycare workers have is far beyond a force free trainer ever has had. They could be a dog trainer. All they just need the training side of things, but they have so much dog knowledge, so much aggression knowledge. They're ready to roll on being a dog trainer and being a pretty good one. But my point is this podcast is to tell the truth for the average human being out there with a dog that they're struggling with. And that's, that's our goal. 
So yeah, we're not, you know? we're not worried about who we offend on this podcast. Okay. Then we did get, uh, we got some feedback that people said we don't want filters. Yeah. Uh, say it how you mean it. We'd rather you hear just give it to us. That was uncut. mainly because I've mentioned in the last podcast, the animal rights group now. Okay. I'm going to address that real quick. So somebody was like, why be all cloak and dagger? Cause we want to talk about the commenters that talk about this podcast. Mm-hmm. Why be all co- cloak and dagger about the animal rights group? You want to know why I'm all cloak and dagger about the animal rights group? It's all the time we have. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> because this is serious business. And these people are serious people to a degree. And we got to be careful at times. That's why I, I would prefer not to mention the name of groups. Because if you don't mention the name, you can say a lot. And if you mention the name, you can say less, in my opinion. So it's pretty serious, bro. They're there. I'm uh, you gotta be careful. I'll be honest with you. This, this channel is the number one dog training channel by views on YouTube. Like people hear what I have to say now. I gotta be a little careful at times with certain things. Responsibility. Yeah. But you have the responsibility ultimately to tell the truth. be a good father, tell the truth, be an example to your kids be an example to other people. Right. So, um, do my job, but also it must get weird because the plan wasn't to have 400,000 subscribers, have people watching everything you're doing, chopping up your videos into little pieces and analyzing every single word you say on the fly. Right. That's not normal. Um, but also you didn't want to have this like spotlight put on you. I don't think you did. Well, yeah, I didn't think I would. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's interesting. I don't mind the 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 videos that when they talk about me and they analyze the videos that I make. Like I don't, I don't hate them. Some of my trainers, like I employ trainers, obviously, um, they get all worked up and they're like, "You need to make a video response. on that person, a response video." And I'm like, "That person has five thousand subscribers. Like, it doesn't matter. Get out of here with that. Yeah, it doesn't matter." Um, I think it's unfair though because. I was watching a podcast, uh, got recommended to me on YouTube and there was uh, doing a little bit of digging. I found that they had done a podcast about you. Mm. Um, they will also remain nameless, not because we're afraid, but because I don't think you reward bad behavior, but essentially take, take a video where you are talking candidly with a customer and then chopping it into tiny bits and criticizing every single thing, I think is not a very um, reasonable thing to do. Yeah, I didn't see it. Um, I don't know, I've never done it. Here's what I do. I try to make, I try my hardest to make videos that help people. I think every dog trainer should make videos that help people. And then when you don't get the subscribers you want, because you don't seem to be getting them through the way of making videos with dogs, then you start making videos about other trainers. And I would lay my head down at night and go, what am I doing with my life? I should probably make a video with dogs trying to get subscribers that way. Use use the dog to show how good you are at what you do. Is that what you're saying? Can you imagine? I get that it's a thing. In everything, I, I assume there's MMA guys and quarterbacks I that break break down videos, but don't the people at home go, um, yeah, just show us you throwing the football. Why are you analyzing Aaron Rodgers and saying what he does wrong? Like it makes no sense. Like you, if you were in the big leagues, you could just show yourself. If you're good enough, just show yourself. There's the teaching. There's the getting subs. Show yourself training a dog. Like. I don't know. I've have I made a video of breaking down another dog trainer? Not like so. breaking down their video. No, I'm, I'm not think saying so. I'm. I would never do it. I'm I, sure you've, uh, you know, uh, done a done a response to certain points that you've seen, where you maybe disagree with what somebody's saying. Yeah, maybe. Not, I don't know. Not like straight. Yeah, covering Bro, what they're doing. I'm gonna make my videos. If I acted like. 
I can't say any of these videos have any of these videos they make has ever affected me. There was one lady, I'll I'll say her name, but if I remembered it, she made a response to my Karen video, which is the greatest video ever made, I might say. We should post that some like up top right now, but we're in public. It, it, it's old. Make sure we don't get any advertisers on this podcast. That's yeah, yeah. It's it's um it's a vid and she broke it down, but she was at least 50%. I agree with him and 50% not like she kind of took, took takes and go, Oh yeah, I agree with him there. Oh yeah. I disagree. At, at least that's fair. As opposed to just, I want to get subs. So I'm going to put this guy's name here and we're going to break down another the click trainer. It clickbait. There you yeah. go. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's similar to like the sports world, right? Where there's like, I don't know if it's the eighties or nineties where people started like the, oh, the yeah. sports radio became almost bigger than sports, right? So you have people like Stephen A. Smith and folks that really Haven't played. Yeah, their whole day. It's like Mighty, remember Mighty 690 back in the day? It was just like eight hours of sports talk all day. Yeah, I guess. Is, is that the right analogy? Because maybe it is and maybe it isn't. Like I don't get offended by someone who hasn't played sports breaking down sports. But what, why, sh why should I, but why would you watch it? But like someone who doesn't break down, I don't know. Be I don't know. It seems maybe the same, but maybe different. I don't get offended by Stephen A. Smith or whoever who hasn't played breaking it down, but here's what they're not doing. They're not going, Oh, Tom Brady's hand should move like this. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're like, technical stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, everyone has the right to criticize. Right. But, yeah, ultimately they, yeah they do uh the numbers aren't gonna lie and and people are and i think this channel is all about giving people the help that they need and delivering what they want right not yeah and uh going in that direction yeah and i guess lastly you know like i want to be and i fail at this but like i want to be like an example to my kids and like go like I did the right thing and I try to do the right thing and not every session is perfect and I don't say things perfectly to clients and I don't do everything perfectly with dogs and Prince doesn't do anything perfectly and mistakes are made. Um, but ultimately I am trying to help. And, and if I were to do a video breakdown of somebody with more subscribers than me, and I were to not make my show my own skills and just break down other trainers who I think are doing it wrong. I just, I don't know if I could, if I could feel as good about myself to my kids and to my wife, I would think I'm taking the easy way out. You know, I I'm, just think I would, and I don't think I would like that. So as far as like your kids and like, do you have ambitions as a dog trainer? Like, I mean, is there, is it just a job or do you, I mean, do you have like a certain belief system that you're like, I do believe this is the right way? Yes. I believe my way is the right way. I bel And I don't just believe that because I do it. And I don't believe that because it gets views on YouTube. I believe it. I believe it because, and you've heard me talk about this in the last few videos, like it's a natural way. I, I, there's something about, I said it in one video or the podcast last time, like, like nature sort of works itself perfect, out yeah. and becomes this thing. And I think Caesar Milan did it kind of right. And they tried to destroy the man's life for it. And I think other people do it right. And I think, and I don't think there's a, a perfect right way or a perfect wrong way, but I do just err on the side of like, Listen, if you try to bite a dog, the might, dog might turn around and it's probably the best thing for it. And, and you cannot be aggressive in this world. And I care. I feel like I care about people also. I care about the clients. Like we got to get rid of this behavior, owners, right? Yeah. Like we got to get rid of this behavior for this lady. I don't, I don't know. Can, Let's do can it we, fairly quickly. Can you get a little bit more into what you said about they tried to destroy Caesar's life? What did they do? What happened? Caesar Milan embarrassed every force free trainer that walked into after Karen Pryor's book came out called Don't Shoot the Dog. 
and she's Karen Pryor started a school. I knew Karen Pryor. I didn't know her, but like she was from my world. She was from the marine mammal world. And all these positive reinforcers said, oh, dolphin trainers, she's so smart. And she came into the dog world. She invented clickers sort of. And, oh, this is the way of the future. And they thought it was the way of the future. And then this guy came around 20 years ago. I don't know. And basically he blew them out of the water because, because aggressive dogs were being fixed and they had no fix and it was embarrassing. And they said, we have to destroy this man. And they had a concerted effort. And in some ways they did that. They didn't totally, but uh, they tried. And what was it motivated by? Well, they say it was like, oh, he's hurting dogs, hurting dogs. Um, But it it was motivated by embarrassment, I believe. Really? Dude, he was in a 30 minute show. He's fixing dogs and they're going to people's homes going, okay, eight sessions. And they're like, and then by the end of the eight sessions, the dog's no better. And they're like, I just want my kind of reactive dog to kind of get with some friends. And they're like, yeah, no, no, you can't do that. And they're like, but I saw on TV. And no client will ever say that to you, by the way. Hey, I saw this guy on TV or I saw this YouTuber do that. They won't say that to, when I get my haircut and it's bad haircut, I just, I just walk out. Like, I don't go like, this is bad. You know what I'm saying? And so the yeah. proof is in the pudding, right? On Like people saw it and they couldn't deny what he was doing. Yeah. And the dog trainer can't deny it. And they try to. And he had this one thing where this dog bit him and they all point to that one. He made a mistake. I've made a mistake. The people saying he's the worst person in the world for this one session, they've made mistakes as everyone have. At least Caesar Milan put himself out there and opened himself up. And these other folks just take the dog like my uh, my video about the dog training wars that were happening a mm. month ago. Right. Until you take the dog that we take or Caesar takes, you can't talk. You just can't. I can't put it in. (laughs) I don't know how you would speak on the subject. You don't work with the dogs we work with. It's enough. Go work with your dog and be happy with it and get your views and get your clients. But don't talk about the guys who are taking and the girls who are taking the dogs. You got to be in the trenches. You got to be in the trenches or be quiet. It's, It's silly. It's silliness. It's little kid stuff. So right? you, it's so you have stuff. respect for Caesar Milan. I have so much respect for Caesar Milan. I'm not Dude, saying you shouldn't. He, I just was asking if you do. He start. He he invented a new thing. I mean, sort of. He put it on TV. It was new. So people, everyone follows on the coattails of people. Someone starts something and then people do it better, and they he mm-hmm. kind of, he started it whatever it is, right. Uh, using other dogs, uh, uh, dominance, uh, he started it. Like there is a thing to, we could go through sports. I'm a big sports fan. Eric's a big sports fan. We could go through sports and go, this guy changed the game. Well, that's the, that changing the game is a big deal. And then changing the industry is a big deal. I want to say in the comments in our last podcast, somebody asked about pack leader. And so, I mean, that goes right into what Caesar. So I think he was saying that you have to be the pack leader, like in some sense, like an alpha, right? That you cannot lead a group of dogs if you're not the alpha. Is that true? Well, that's a very general statement. What does pack leader mean? What does alpha mean? What does dominance mean? Like these are, these are not very, it's hard to, uh, 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 What's the definition of those words, right? And does it apply to wolves? And they'll the force free folks will go, well, there's no such thing as alpha based on this David Mech. He he said that there's alphas and then he took it back. And there's this whole like ambiguity about the thing. I don't care about any of it. I don't care about any of those words. Here's what I care about. When a dog is looking at another dog saying, I want to attack that dog, not out of fear, not out of but just malice. Okay. Here's the fix or oftentimes the fix, the dog going, I'm not attacking that dog in front of this guy. This guy is the boss. Whatever you want to call it, you call it whatever you want. It fixes problems. Caesar Milan knew it and I know it. And it's nothing physical except a grab, sit down and an attitude from the owner to say, you don't fight around me. I am the man. 
There's no fighting around the boss. I don't know how else to put it. I don't know how it can be more clear about it to, and I realize it's hard to the normal person. This is hard. Um, but to a dog trainer, it ain't rocket science. The treats aren't going to fix this thing. This is malice. This is hatred. This is aggression. This is real deal stuff. Don't fight around the boss. So you said the man, so pack leader can be a man or a woman, right? Yes, and so how Adam. you have a long history of training smaller stature women with large dogs, right? Yes. I and did it in the last video. So how are you taking, oh, that is a good point. Um, maybe a more extreme example than that of a very small statured woman with a very huge dog. How, what are you like, what type of mindset, how are you getting them to take control and to be able to like really take something, which even if you were to look at it from the side, like how is she able to control that dog in such a way? Like, what would you tell her? Someone commented, did you see, did you see the comment on that video, that video saying, she goes, so. how do I let my dog know I'm stronger than them when my dog is 40 pounds heavier than them? And I did the math. I go, okay, hundred pound woman with a 140 pound dog. That's a big weight. And I was like going, what do I say to this lady in the comments? Like, it's hard. It's going to be hard. But it can be done. It can be done with leverage and it can be done with, with at certain times you grab the dog and you have your legs out and you, and you, and you just, there are Newfoundlands and St. Bernard's more than any other breed. Okay. When you take a leash, when I take the leash and they go to pull you and I just stand pat or I give a little correction, I've seen it in these Newfies eyes, Newfoundland's eyes. They literally go, they pull and they don't get anywhere. And I've seen them look at me and it's a look of, oh, okay. He's I'm not charge. saying they never pull again. I'm saying they... There's something about strength from the person that the, if, imagine if you have just rehearsed doing something over and over again, and then eventually you beat everybody up who you ever wanted to beat up. And then you run into someone bigger and stronger than you. It, it changes your, it changes your brain a little bit. It's like the so, brain chemistry changes. So things change. Pathways are formed. It's a whole brain. Thing. So the, 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 the small person leverage and like timing is important. There's a reason that the six, five guy from our goat, our greatest of all time video was big. Strong. All the guys were pretty big and strong. Two of them were big and strong. No offense to the other guy who I thought size. he was in pretty good, I'm good five, shape. I'm like five, nine, I like, like I'm five, not 10. Okay. Five. Thank you. All right. I'm not big. Like, I don't know. It's leverage, but it's attitude and it's attitude. That's right. We're not putting up with this. Can we get a video together or get like a challenging big dog with a smaller stature woman. I keep saying that, but you know, something that no one would believe. Can we do that and show that it can be done? Cause with the right attitude, right. With the right leverage, we can show that it's possible. And we have people that have, have implemented that. So we could have cool. Liz, we could have my wife. But yeah. She can do it already. Yeah. I mean, easy. Yeah. Okay. But someone not my wife, like, uh, well, she's yeah, a great example. Trainers. We should probably just have a video where they see how, she could take a dog she's never met and then that would be cool to see. Yeah. Well, we can try. I mean, we can get it. We just have to put it together and make it. Yeah. That's a good. All right. Not have, we, have we? Yeah. No, no, that's good. I mean, I'm going to keep firing these questions. Oh, just... I read all the comments or not all the comments, but I read all the comments at one point and then I read yeah, more yeah, comments. Yeah. They keep coming in. So yeah. you have to kind of keep up with them. And there's a certain point where I have to just kind of go from there, but I think we will get into some of the comments. Um, but I think the general feel was they wanted you to expand more like you just did. Like they didn't want you to just kind of make comments and move forward. They wanted to get like oh, more deep into in this podcast. Yeah. And so an example would be, um, you know, what you just talked about with Caesar and, and so forth. So I think that was good. Uh, and then mm. everyone said they don't want you to bite your tongue. Like just, get, you know, tell them straight. Yeah. I think I just told it as straight as I can yeah. on the few subjects we talked about. I mean, we're going to get right? canceled, but that's fine. Yeah. I mean, who cares? Get demonetized. No one cares. Um, so I'm going to just grab a couple. Yeah. I What's it from the podcast or the last video? No, I want to focus on podcast because podcast I feel comments. like if these folks are specifically watching the podcast, 
Yes, they should. We want to know rewarded. what, and we want to know what they think because we want to give them what they want to see, right? I mean, this. All right, I'm ready. Um, so let me start with uh, this one, and I don't know what these are. I screenshotted them, and, and now they're in random order. But this is for skate for leisure. I was just explaining to someone the other day why Beckman's tra uh, training is different. And your guys talked about that here. Prince is actually in the mix contributing. Prince is not sitting next to the owner as an example show dog. He is communicating to the other dogs along with Joel. That is huge. No one is like it. I didn't see that one. That's a good one. That's well explained. Uh, yeah, Prince is, um, Prince is a star. Bro, oh, I'm going to tell you a story. So it kind of goes along with this. I was walking Prince on a leash. A neighbor, two neighbors were talking. And then one of the neighbors who I don't know, but they're my neighbors. So I like, I want to be cool with them. Her dog, her like 70 pound mixed breed dog started to just leave her side of the street, walk over. My dog's on a leash, walk over. And I'm like thinking to myself, but I want to be cool with my neighbors, right? I'm thinking to myself, lady, you're just going to let your dog come over here. Like, I'm like, I'm not going to say any, I'm not, I wouldn't, didn't want to say anything for two reasons. One, it's my neighbor and it's, it never turns out well when you're like, mm -hmm. Hey, can you grab your dog? Please. Like, it's fine. I would say it. It's, it's my neighbor. It's a little confrontation. I was like, whatever. But then I would have said it. But then the other part was, I was like, okay, you want, you want, you want your dog? To, I don't know if you want this. Like you're well, letting it. Okay. What let's did you do, say in the last video? You want it. You asked for it. Right? Okay. So the dog comes over and it wasn't a mastiff running out of its house directly at us. Right. He was soft, but they both kind of, the dog comes out tail all stiff and he kind of comes out and then Prince is like, all right, you're going to approach me like that. And Prince is unneutered. So, or not neutered. I hate when I say, it. I say it all the time, unneutered, not neutered. So is unneutered, not a word. It's a thing, but like, it makes no sense. Unneutered. It's like neutered has to be the right thing. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> you undo it. The dog is un. It doesn't even make any sense, he's but people <laughs> say it. I, I've said it my whole life. Like natural. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's the way he should he's full be. Natty. Yeah, so he's Terrible. intact. Yeah. That's okay. What so other dogs are like, okay, what's up, dude? So I'm thinking, lady, like my dog does this for a living. Like if your dog is not cool, Prince will whoop your dog and not hurt him. Like you don't want this. You think you want it for some reason, but you don't want it. And it's not like her dog's coming out all happy. He's like all bowed up and like, yeah. I'm like, okay. So I just let the loose leash loose yeah. and I just go, okay. And then they just, and then she finally like calls her dog. She realizes. Yeah. Like if it was a dude, I thought it would be like a macho thing, but it was just some old lady. Hmm. And I was, I hope you don't run into that neighbor. Cause if she ever sees this show, she's not going to be happy. I know. Uh, but I was like, it's like the MMA fighter, like against the guy who's kind of tough. Like it's not close and I'm not sitting here bragging. It's what my dog does for a living. He mm. is good at reading dogs and knowing when to proactively, you know, he's, it's what he does. I don't know how else to say it. Yeah. We got into it last week a little bit about that. And like, Hey, for all of you dog fighting people, we don't want to hear about it. But I, I think something that a point that you might not have completely made clear is that mm. if you have a working dog like Prince that has to deal with really tough dogs all the time. His ability to just use his body like we saw in the last yeah, video yeah. and to just like, um, you know, it's not like this is new to him and the the on confrontations are new, right? Like this is what he does. Now, is there somebody who is dogfighting? I'm sure they are. We're not Prince, into that. You know what I mean? But No, and Prince isn't the toughest dog in the world by any means. But he's, he's going to win at a fair kind of size and and and, yeah. and, and, and if the other dog pound is, for pound he's, he's yeah like, like this is so bad <laughs> next question <laughs> it's not that bad anytime oh, it gets into the michael no one? well just with all the negative stuff about the, the what i would call weird people that always talk about how their dog will beat your dog up and stuff and then yeah. just a sensitivity around like dog fighting you know there was a person who got in a lot of trouble for dog fighting many years back um so, you know, we want to make sure we keep plenty of space from oh, people yeah. that are into the We're dog miles away from that. thing. No, I know. I know. Yeah. So this one is from uh, Cummins24421. Um, the answer is curating society. 
in enforcing cultural norms? The answer is not you and your friends deciding I need the permission of the government to have my dog in the first place. Consequences, severe ones, if I fail to manage my dog? Absolutely. But permission from the managerial state under threat of death if I just own a dog in the first place? No. Now, I think that was from my comment I last think that week. Was, it was. It was from that one about, yes, I know what but you were saying. Should you have a license to have yes. a dog? And let me, he uses a lot of big words in there. I'm not that smart. So <laughs> the man, he says, uh, curate, which is like, okay, means. yeah, it's like if you have a collection of animals at a zoo, you're a curator or, mm. or, or art pieces at a, at a place, at a museum you're a curator um and then so he's saying freedom he's saying he's he's he, he likes freedom and actually i'm glad that i didn't see that coming i'm glad he brought that up here's the thing there's two different worlds okay we're already calling out certain groups so i'm going to call out an entire continent all right you europeans okay you don't america we don't want to be like you for the most part, and I understand you don't want to be like us. It's all the European folks who are like, who are like, I can't like, they can't believe the e-collars are allowed in this country. Mm -hmm. They can't, they don't say it, but they can't believe pit bulls are allowed in this country. It's because we have freedoms in this country. Europeans or some of them, <laughs> just a continent call out. They <laughs> That includes you, Germany, includes England. <laughs> England, England's a little different, but like France, they banned, they banned pit bulls. Okay, whatever. You guys love banning things. And that's where you, 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 Prince's tail crop, which I didn't do. I got him at four months. Okay, you, you want to ban it. You want to ban this. You want to ban that. You guys love banning things. We are Americans. We don't love banning things. We like freedoms. Freedoms are dangerous. I get it. We don't like we don't love banning things. So you guys, and they love it. They're always like, I can't, I did one on pepper spray. They're like every European what? was. Be careful. That oh, is yeah. the one video that has been taken down. A, a strike was delivered to Beckman Dog Training. They that. took it down. Did they? YouTube took the video down. And I, <laughs> I'm not going to say what I, I said. It wasn't bad. Yeah. It was a joke. But, um, Let's not so we can't one. say that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pepper spray. They're like, uh, we live in Europe. Pepper spray is outlawed here. Can you tell us something else to do to uh, you guys? You're, you're it's enough the line, with the, Joel. <laughs> the banning of things and the love. Forget the banning of things. It's their love. The the per, the people and not everybody. I get it, but a lot of the people in Europe, they're down for the banning of things. They're like, yeah, ban more stuff, government. We 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 love it. Like, what is up with you guys and like loving? So before we totally bury this podcast, a couple of things. So one is it is not allowed from what I read, probably in the comments at some point about you cannot declaw your cat in Europe. I think it's against the law. Now, you guys I think it's against know. the law here. I don't I didn't know that. I mean, it didn't used to be. I don't know. I mean, we learned last week that the circuses are not done anymore. That's I passed the yeah. circus on the way like <laughs> last week and I here in Huntington Beach. And I was like, one. it's a full circus tent. And I was like, oh, circuses are still around. But I don't know if they have like lions there. The I one thing the I would say um, from the gentleman who had said that is, I will not say whether I agree with you or I don't agree with you. I think you have strong political leanings. Good for you. And, you know, ultimately, I think my job here is to make sure I don't share those. I want to be more of a moderator. So it's really yeah, the question mindful. that I am not saying that you should have to have a license. I think some people should have a license to, you know, <laughs> to do a lot of things, right? Because yeah. uh, if you can't demonstrate that you can, you know, handle yourself and others, you know what I'm saying? This goes to your point of like, what should we do about societal problem of aggression in society? Mm -hmm. And that is something I went off last week on the podcast. I talked about two things. And my brain just got stuck on two things. And I'm not going to actually allow because it's still too big to talk about. Mm -hmm. It's like two, we don't spend the whole podcast on, but I basically talked about the dog numbers and people not being like unacceptable behaviors are unacceptable. Those are the only two things. But here's, here's the real answer, or in addition to that, is you need, if you're going to change things, you need sort of, and I'm not, 
you are going to need, it's such a big problem, dogs dying, kids dying. You are going to need some sort of governmental intervention. You, I, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm for it. I'm saying, I don't know how you really make a dent in it with this podcast or with, or with more good trainers or with just a, some less dogs, like nothing's going to change. I mean, I feel like there has to be some sort of, of you, you bring up a good point though, right? Which is that, so you'd say, well, you shouldn't have the, the government should not be able to tell you what you can do about owning a dog. Right. And I'll just come right out. I don't, I don't disagree, but should the government be allowed to tell my neighbor, because I think I should be able to do everything, but should my neighbor be able to own a 100% pure bread wolf? I'm thinking no, but what about a, you know, another wild animal? Like yeah. there's rules of that. And I don't think that gets us a lot of pushback. Yeah. So it's like when, you know, so where do you draw the line between yeah, that like know. real big one? So that's going to be, so can we say before we get off this one and go into one more, two more comments, can you give us something nice that you believe about the Europeans? <laughs> Like, let's talk about the Europeans that's and how a, great they are for a minute. That's a great question. <laughs> Request, right? Let me think. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's not to say there isn't anything nice. Uh, bro, you put me on the spot, which now deep, digs me a deeper <laughs> hole with the continent of Europe. Uh, Italian food. My my wife loves Italy. Yeah. <laughs> you're not helping man. uh like no let, let's be clear on the europeans <laughs> they invented democracy so yeah i think the, the greeks right yeah more or less but think about this right like there are germans watching this right now that a lot of them are 100 locked and loaded on everything that you say and what you believe and they are following the channel and they're right. the worst guy who just said I that i love my german yeah. People. So it's not like they don't all like don't they all believe just because everything should be outlawed there. That doesn't mean everyone who follows the channels like that. Yeah. And it doesn't mean they all follow that. Listen, yeah. I'm this is a podcast. We're going to speak in generalities. If you want this to be a four hour podcast and we just go, OK, let's look up how many what percentage of Europeans believe that like we're not going to do that. But generally, my animal rights create. I started They're They're mostly from Europe. The commenters that are like yeah. all animal rights. It's almost all. The animal rights movement was um, started in France um, a couple hundred years ago or something. Like it started, hmm. like there's a, I didn't know that. that's, it's, it's big out there. Uh, you know, so, yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'm going to read this one. It's from Flippo Kid. Uh, it says, the, so the latest findings, according to a DNA study, is that wolves are not an ancestor but a close cousin. And they're referring to whether or not, um, you know, where, where this whole dog thing came from, but I can totally see a bunch of people having killed a wolf or an ancestor of the wolf and then finding the nest of puppies and not having the heart to kill them. So what happens next? They raise them and then he kind of goes on from there. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I like the fact that people are bringing up stuff from the podcast and are kind of almost like fact checking it in a way. Yeah. I don't know if that's fact. What do you say? Our dogs don't come from wolves. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I was yeah. a little, I I'm suspect about everything. Hence yeah. the last podcast when you said that. And I was like, that's what they say. Yeah. It's cause. Yeah. We said our dogs from wolves. Uh, that's what they say. That's what they tell me. And then you kind of look at Joel. You're like, he doesn't believe that. Right. Um, I think that's funny. Yeah. I think that's funny too, because you yeah, listen, it's enough just believing what people tell you. So we have a really cool. Don't believe of... what I tell you. Go test it. Yeah. Go, go see if being the boss of your aggressive dog helps. If it doesn't, don't believe anything more I say. If it does, then believe more of what I say. Go test everything. So we have a really cool segment, which is kind of the Joel reaction segment we got to get to. Oh. So I want to do that. But I did want to say, so this person, Luckings, Luckingsworth, this is great. I would love to hear more about wild animals, the politics of the dog world, etc. Also Rhodesia discussion. Um, I thought that was interesting. Uh, more people were talking about the, um, wolves. So that like the wolf mm. thing actually was kind of surprising. I saw none of these comments. By the way. Yeah. I, I was reading them all. Yeah. Um, um, I had, this is actually kind of funny. This is real Sims house. 
and she tagged it at 35. And one thing we should probably start putting tags in so people know where where we say what within the podcast, but it says Real Sims House. It says, I had a wolf, very protective. I used to be bullied. I stopped being bullied. My current dog is part blue healer, German shepherd, and I was told there is some coyote in there somewhere. She is the most amazing dog ever. The wolf couldn't come uh, to the house. Uh, so I just thought that was funny. That she had a wolf? That she had a wolf and that they stopped bullying her once she had a wolf. Yeah. Yeah, she has a wolf. It's like having like an alligator or something. Right? Yeah. Same kind of deal. So I'm going to get a Joel reaction if oh, we're yeah. good. Are Let's you good to it. go off comments? I feel like we gave some love to the commenters, right? Yeah. So if you want to, but... if you want, if you have interesting stuff about the podcast and you want us to discuss it, drop it in the comments here. We'll talk about we'll read next that. podcast. Exactly. It'd be hard to talk about <laughs> on this podcast. Um, so, all right. So let's go ahead and um, I want to get your reaction to this. I think I have to jump this on over here. Video. So. We're, we're learning. We're on the fly. We do not do this professionally. We do not want to share the audio because we don't want these things taken down. So go ahead and watch this, Joel. I'll explain what's happening and we'll get your uh, feedback here. So let me go ahead and get it started here. So there's a gal in a suit. It's like a bite suit and a guy, there's a Malinois and it looks, and this is for the people that have audio, just bitter, just bitter arm. Yeah, but yeah, she's in with the a suit. dog suit. It's supposed bite to suit. bite. And he is, what do they call that? Where they bite suit. shake him? Oh, yeah. That violent shake. Oh, look, he's like pushing the dogs. It's like he wants the dog to get more of a bite, I believe. And then he looks like he's pulling the dog off. Yeah. Right? And she looks shook. Yeah. So, so 1.6 million likes. Likes. Yeah. That's a lot of views. 1.6 million likes. You so, want my reaction to that video? Yeah. Just, yeah, give us your initial take. On that video? Uh, listen, I'm not going to give a reaction on that video because... You just did. <laughs> because I don't know, I don't know enough about the sport to give a reaction on that video. So it's bite work with Malinois, bite suits. There was a guy who did, a Belgian Malinois YouTube guy he did a live. He talked smack about me. He took the live down. Oh, I remember that. He took the live down, but one of my people, one of my commenters, subscribers had the link. He must have made it unlisted, which mm -hmm. is a YouTube thing where people who have a link can see it. She had the link. She posted it to me. I watched it where he's talking smack. And he's like, he's like, that guy's, I'm not going to talk about that. Because I don't know about that. Now, if you just want my reaction on some other, I don't know about that sport. You know what I do? I I fix aggressive dogs and I help people to look at the walkie and recall. That guy, that Malinois guy who talks smack about me, he doesn't live in my world. But he's talking what, about me. What so was I'm he not saying talk about, about you? Do you remember? He said, yeah, he goes, he, he, was, he was basically like, you, he's, yeah, that. yeah, he's a bad dog trainer. That guy doesn't do what I do. Yeah. He would have no idea whether I'm a good, bad dog trainer or bad dog trainer. My so, point is, that's not my world. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have brought that up. So you saying. say, but you said, you said sport. Can you like enlighten me on that? Like, work? Is, is there, is that a sport? Uh, yeah. Well, Schutzen's a sport. What's they, that? They track and then the dogs like go up a ramp and then the behind a blind and they tracking and then they do bite work at you the said end. Schutzen? Schutzen. Schutzen. Yeah. German. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then people just do, it's a big, one of my trainers, uh, uh, he, he went off and he's doing it now with his Malinois. Like it's cool. It's fun. It's a big thing with Malinois, it's right? It's, that's giant. I mean, so that's, is there another breed that's similar as far as German like shepherds? Okay. Those are the main ones. They have, do they have extraordinary bite power or is it, or is it just that they're that type of dog? Malinois? Yeah. Uh, that's a good, I, I don't know if Malinois bite much harder than a Doberman. Like a pit bull? Well, it's pit bulls different. have big jaws Here's though. the thing. Okay. I've thought about this a lot because <laughs> I lay at night thinking about this stuff. <laughs> All right. There's long nose and there's short nose. Mm -hmm. Okay. You ready for this people? Okay. I don't think I, I'm not bragging. I just don't think you're going to hear this from anyone else. What do wolves, what do wolves have? Longer ones, right? Why would wolves not have uh short, no short ones like pit bulls? They have to forage, maybe? So the long nose is good for getting something. 
Those four inches when mm. you're chasing something matters. Those four inches, Prince's nose, a wolf nose. Yeah, pretty much a wolf nose. Compared, if a pug is attacking me, I'm not worried at all. One, it's pug done by the heart. Also, it has no nothing sticking out. The canines are not at the end of this thing. It's not no getting leverage, right? me. But when when a short nosed dog, brachio, whatever it's called, when they get something, the teeth are closer to the head. Mm -hmm. The head is closer to the neck. The neck is closer to the body. So when they shake, it's more power. It's more power. So in a wolf's world, nature is perfect. Remember, that's a theme. It's the only theme we have between these two podcasts. Nature is perfect. So the animals out there have long noses are better for nature because they would rather get the thing. Once they get it, they're going to hold on. But but the short noses are better for holding on. So I think for me, when I see that uh, bite work thing, oh yeah, I think it, it looks like it takes a lot of skill that... I mean, I see I, my first thought is I think maybe that the suit doesn't work properly. Maybe they bite my hand instead of the arm and then I get, yeah. you know, the dog. And then also they I'm call the dog off yeah. and then it doesn't immediately let go, which makes me think like what's going on. Well, here? you got to watch a lot of bite work. There's so many videos out there. So, I mean, the, the suit works. People aren't getting mauled. These dogs, a lot of it is it's it's a game. It's fun. And that's what's good about it. That's what I like about it. Have you done that? No, but I have a story about it with Bosco, my first dog. So it's a game. It's like it's done with the owner. The owner puts the, the arm thing on or the suit on and the dog jumps and it's a big tug of war game. Mm -hmm. Bosco, my first Doberman, could have done bite work because he loved it. And we'd take a towel and we'd sometimes wrap it on my arm and he'd bite and we'd be and it looked aggressive with a towel. Yeah, he wasn't biting that hard. But mm. and and anyway, so I it, it's it can be it can be it's fun. I think where I run into a lot uh, of times, a, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk hopefully that much about it. I don't know that much about it. I think the challenge I have is like, there's a UFC fighter, John Jones, right? And he has, uh, I've seen a, that. have you seen that? And so mm. he, but it's very much like guard dog yes. approach, like, like attacking somebody who's probably in your, your yard, right? Maybe it's like police dog ish. Yeah. So I, think, I mean, as long as it's coming from a good place, I think it's fine. Um, but also when you have kids, you're like, do I want this dog to be the gnarliest biter in the world? Maybe we'll know. have someone on this podcast to explain it better to us. All right, John. John Jones. Oh, yeah. You'll be getting a, a holler from me here soon. The but grizzly bear is the toughest predator there is. They're, they're the most badass animal in the world. Besides, I mean, an elephant. An elephant is just too damn big. A blue whale. Like you can, they're in the water. It's a grizzly bear. The, the fight, who would win in a fight? It's the grizzly bear. Like pound for pound. No, not pound for pound. Pound for pound, I'd take I'd take a honey badger, I'd take a wolverine, I'd take a bull terrier, I'd take uh, it's a grizzly bear. Man on man. Honey, honey badger. They're crazy, right? I saw yeah. a honey badger against like a couple of leopards and he fought his way off and, and got free. I've seen that. This so you might say, well, what about a polar bear? They did they did a I don't know if it was a study, they had a bunch of trackers on Polar bears or grizzly bears in um, up by the in north where these two animals meet. It's not common. Grizzly bears moved in. Guess what the polar bears did? Moved out. <laughs> We're out of here. <laughs> There's your science. People Earth are like, is in the pudding. bro, the polar bears wanted nothing to do with it. They're a little bigger. Yes. Grizzly bears take down elk. Polar bears take down seals. Who's tougher? The elk, the elk killer or the seal killer now that's not always the case like oh just because this one goes after tougher game it's it's bad these guys are pound for pound uh uh that's it sharks or killer whales okay there's that one video of the killer whale killing the shark i don't think that ends the story they off the coast of south africa they had a bunch of tags on sharks mm -hmm. killer whales moved in guess what the sharks did they i've seen the little lines of the shark moved out they all of them bailed. They're big though, too. What the orcas? Yeah, but the like a, a yes, they're bigger. But like a great, a big old great white. He's like, I want nothing to do with this with yeah. these whales. And they're they like fight in packs, basically. Right? Yeah, but I mean, I've seen killer whales. Obviously, I work with killer whales. 
they they're they've got these conical teeth that are about this big that if you bite bite you isn't going to be good but their lips are kind of in front of their teeth like it's not that easy for them to bite killer whales have or excuse me sharks have three rows of razor sharp teeth like i'm surprised sharks are that scared of killer whales they must know something though right? they know something that's right that's and they're crazy saying. smart right just like the polar bears knew something and they're crazy smart, but that doesn't always matter. Like, is there any experience you have as far as the, like that you could tell us about when you were there at SeaWorld just about like how smart a whale would be? Uh, sorry, Orca. I could tell you a lot of stories. Like an example that we're like, that's a smart whale. Okay. You got to give me a second. How smart an Orca is? Well, yeah, they, they take a fish and they put it at the end of their tongue and they cruise around, some of them, some of them don't care, and they fling the fish about four feet in front, and a bird comes to get the fish, and they kill the bird. And it sucks to and see. they do it a lot? Some whales do it a lot. It's like a strategy. That's a full strategy, and it's pretty, and they just, they put it right at the end, and then they just go flip, and the fish goes perfectly four feet in front of them, and then they dip, and then the bird comes, and they get the bird. So, I don't like to see birds die at the hands of killer whales, like it's not fun to watch but uh yeah you love animals so i think my, one thing i want to get out of you with on this like uh this grizzly bear thing oh, is yeah. just about the like nature side of it that because some people might say well joel you're a little you're a little hard on the dogs man i mean you're so serious like you're not laughing and joking around all these aggressive dogs like uh so to get the other side of it which is you see this display in nature like do you know what i'm saying how yeah. what i'm asking you here yeah yeah uh, animals, dogs, bears, wolves, they're, they're tough animals that their minds are to some degree, like, like are set up for consequences and they'll sort of push until those they're met with consequences to a degree and they're physically strong animals. I mean, I don't know if that's what you're getting at, but, um, you have to deliver some type of resistance or sometimes the lady in the last video when i finally stopped her it's the beginning of the vinto and i said when he's running up to you you keep walking he's Walk got to meet him. some resistance or why would that dog ever stop launching himself at the lady mm -hmm. due to treats maybe probably not i think it's just the seeing the how violent the grizzly thing is i mean they are fighting Almost to the death. I mean, kind of to the death, right? This bear wants to kill this bear and possibly eat him. They'll eat cubs. You know that. They'll probably, uh, I all m many Lions animals. Lions do that too, right? Occasionally. But these bears are so aggressive and they're so, uh, there's not as much game as like, they, 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 he might eat the other one. Like, yes, they're, he might be the starting. wild is, is, is unless you've seen as many video unless you watch a lot of wild videos and through your whole life like it's so violent it's so painful and these animals are so tough i saw a killer whale there's these metal gates and he was taking his head and he was hitting the gates twelve thousand pound male hitting these metal gates with his head and i was 30 feet away on a concrete deck, concrete for 30 feet. And you could feel the ground shake the power they have. The only way you would ever understand the power of that fight is if you were in a car accident. And I'm not even saying if the bear is attacking you, you'd just be dead. But like, even to be close to that, you would feel the ground shaking. It's, it's, it's next level. It's next level. I wouldn't have known this unless I was uh, near that 30 feet from that whale and felt the cement shake when he's hitting his head and he he didn't care that's the thing he didn't it didn't hurt him that bite on the back that bite on the back how is it not killing that other bear how is that other bear not canine sunk in in it because it's got this skin and this fur and this fat and these bones that are so thick and this pain tolerance that's you can't understand it's you insane. or anybody yeah nobody can we talked about that last week. I we could yeah we could talk about nature. That's why it's Beckman's Unleashed. And then part. also like there's the you are a big fan of this nature kind of like governing your training philosophies, right? Yeah. Like let Prince 
where possible, let prints deliver the correction. We talked about that, I think, a bit last week. Yeah, but that's, where possible. Yeah, where possible. Yeah, I do. I do believe it. I believe in hierarchical systems to a degree. And, you know, like, I don't want to fight around this boss. That's rooted in nature to a degree. And I'm not saying wolves, a wolf is like, oh, the boss doesn't want us to fight. No, but the boss might take his mouth and cover up your mouth with his mouth and threaten, vi you know, right. hey, which I don't do. I mean, I've occasionally put a dog on his side in a way, but it's generally to calm the dog, not for like, not, not the way people normally see it, right? You yeah. Know, you like do it kind of like where you would do it with a cattle or um, whatever this. Yeah. You know that's I mean? sport. Them, no, it's not as a punishment. And I'm not saying it is in that way. That's a, that's a sport. But uh, when you can, like, like people want to come up with new things and then fix something that's not broken. Yeah. You know? No, I think, but I think there's like a divorce, like we're divorced from a societal standpoint. We're divorced from nature. And so we see it and we're like, this is like, I'm surprised they didn't go in and break up this grizzly fight. Like, really? You know what? I mean, I'm not that surprised because oh. they probably are not allowed to and they definitely shouldn't. But yeah. like, you know what I mean? How like they? people see it. <laughs> well, he has a flare gun. I mean, I guess you could shoot the flare gun at him, but who knows whether that would work or not. But yeah, it's just, there's, we're so divorced from, you know, and like they're talking about in this will be the last probably topic here, but I want to get your take on this um, selfishly. So uh, someone, I think, in the comments mentioned like the reintroduction of wolves into California. Now, there's there is a lot of debate like in a hunting community in Colorado. I believe they introduced wolves someone back commented into Colorado. on that too on Colorado. Yeah, Colorado is, I believe, the newest one in there also. Yeah. And so um, there's a Obviously, it runs up against um, the cattle business, obviously, and ranching and stuff. But then there's the other side of it, whereas, like, there's um, a whole ecosystem that hasn't had wolves yeah. in it for a long period of time. And now you are uh, basically adding almost like an apex predator, right, yeah. to it. And so then they were saying, like, maybe um, they're looking at a reintroduction of these species and stuff like that. Yeah. It's comp If I'm a rancher, I'm not down with it. Yeah. <laughs> If I'm a guy sitting in my basement, no offense, I'm not saying that just doesn't leave my house and will never be in a prairie and worry about wolves, not to say you'd worry about wolves. You should worry about those animals right there, the bears. Bro, you want to go on a hike with your kids? Yeah, it it's a thought. Mountain lions are a thought. I'm. Mm -hmm. It's a thought when you have a little kid and you're like, should, should my four-year-old be 20 feet ahead of me on this hike? And I'm not saying it's an easy answer. But like when you're a parent and you're in Southern California and you're hiking with your kid. Bit. Yeah. It's a, it's a, if you're not thinking about that, you're crazy. Now, does that mean there shouldn't be those animals there? Of course I'm not saying that, but like it changes your life. And a lot of people would say, well, that's fine. They're, 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 uh, grizzlies should be in California, which they're not, or wolves should be in this place or mountain lions should be, or shouldn't be in this place. Yes, they should probably be there, but like, your life is going to change mm -hmm. unless you're in your basement all the time, not doing anything. Me and my son went to Mammoth. We go to the top of the mountain. It's the last run down. We're, we're riding down on our bikes and the person who was, we go up on the, the lift. Yeah. The person who mans the lift rides by us and goes, okay, guys, like that's it. Well, I'm the last one and we're at the top. And she goes, I got to go. And we're literally no one else is up there. it's like the moon like halfway up mammoth it's yeah, like been, nothing's there up there before. and i'm like if a bear comes out it's just us it's just me and my seven-year-old on a bike it's a thought yeah it's it's and it's a real thing okay i know i'm no and i think topic. it's important i think it's important for what you're saying though because i think some people will be like come on you're worried about getting attacked by a mountain lion but to be fair between where i live and where joel lives Essentially, there is, there are attacks with mountain lions with children. Like it's happened in yeah. my city. Yeah, like it happens. It's not like some random thing we're believing. Like it actually does happen in Southern California. And part of that is because there is no, there is no hunting of them, uh, and that's a whole other situation. But they are, they are getting pushed for uh, closer and closer into the cities as they run out yeah. of habitat. Yeah. 
it's it's it's, it's fine. You're you, no one's everyone's fine. But you shouldn't let your kid run forty feet in front of you on a hike. Yeah, I mean, you do. Do you hike? Oh, I with would your, never do that. I would because never because of mountain lines, right? Anything. And that's fine. There's there's this sort of. Uh, of us change our behavior in order to have animals, beautiful, wonder- I've trained mountain lions. I've walked mountain lions. They're awesome. I love them. I want to work with big cats. I don't let my kid run in front of me. Changes my life a little. That's okay. But you can only take so many in life, like things that, that's why the whole animals under the care of man or in captivity. You're not going to start using that. No, uh, the term, a- right? animals in captivity um, argument is not this one-sided argument. Like people, I did this whole video on it and I said, I was at SeaWorld and this whale came out and splashed all the kids and the kids, all I saw is hands and I thought oh, jumping and these kids were so happy. And I thought there's a human side to this. And and like there's a human side to all these arguments where, where jo- joy for humans has to be thought of on some level. And we, you know. Yeah, you can't. It, everything we're here too right we're that's a good point but we are also out of control too right no, we're out of control